We were on Gadigal Country on the corner of Queen and Monker Street in Mullara, which is about a couple of kilometres from Sydney CBD. I'm Kirsten Stanisic. And I'm Jonathan Richards, and we're the directors of Richard Stanisic. And this is the Wallara Hotel. The Wallara Hotel was originally built in 1928. It's an iconic Art Deco building. It's a um, two-storey, quintessential corner pub in Wallara. My name's Alistair Campbell. Together with my wife, Elizabeth, we ran point with Jonathan Richards from Richard Stanisic on delivering the refurbishment of the Wallara Hotel. What attracted us to the Wallara Hotel was the fact that it was an asset in a beautiful part of Sydney that we felt had a wonderful opportunity to reposition it. It wasn't appealing from the streetscape to be able to come in and enjoy what a hospitality is meant to be. So from the outset, we had intention to present back to the Wallara and Eastern Suburbs community a wonderful hospitality amenity. This was a really special project for us because we undertook the design and the construction during the COVID lockdown period. And I think it was during that time that we really realised the significance of what that sort of iconic Australian pub means to all of us. The client's brief was to turn what was a really fantastic old pub back to that. It really didn't have the calibre of Bistro Moncur, that's the restaurant next to it in the same building and the client wanted to build a pub that was going to last a very long time and have the longevity that the restaurant does. We felt that it was incredibly important to hero the legacy and uphold the legacy of such an iconic Eastern Suburbs Hotel. We were really drawn to the Art Deco features of this asset and very much wanted those features to be part and prominent in the refurbishment. Originally, the pub had a classic pub tile facade Unfortunately, over time, that tile had been removed and it had been rendered and painted a beige paint finish for many years. Part of the reinvigoration from the street was to not just open the facade up with glazing, but give it a visual presence with beautiful new glazed teal tiles that shine under the new lighting of the awning. An important part of the brief from the client was to improve the interaction between the interior of the pub and the street itself. We installed new steel framed operable glass all the way around the pub that gives visitors to the pub the ability to look out and have fresh air coming in. It also improves the interaction between the street and the pub itself. So the pub operates during the daytime and well into the evening as well, so lighting's a, a really important consideration for any kind of venue like that. So I think we considered a couple of things for that. It's about bringing in a lot of natural daylight during the day, which is really important. And then during the evening, again, it was just an interpretation of a really classic old school oyster light becoming the kind of feature of the space and indirect lighting through the ceiling helmets to create a kind of soft and gentle mood. Because we have really used this old school pulp finishes with hard reflective surfaces, Acoustics is one of the other most critical things in the space. So the ceiling design was all around infusing these ceiling tiles, almost reflective of the 1930s again, that give you a really great sense to the space through the absorption of sound. The warm colours of the interior were also kind of inspired by original pubs of the Art Deco era. But I think we've looked at a lot of handmade materials, handmade tiles and natural timbers that give you that natural variation in the material. And I think that brings a warmth into the space that really works from daytime to nighttime. My favourite part of the project is most likely uh, the bar. The bar from the outset in the conversations I had with, with Jonathan was around, it has to be prominent, it has to be large, it has to have a presence. All classic Australian front bars that have a wonderful reputation, they have bars that have a presence. The other thing with that, it attracts people in. People gravitate into a community focused amenity where they can come and enjoy, socialise with friends and family. So the bar's very much the focal point, probably is the most favourite part of the project. 
The atmosphere of the hotel is wonderful. To experience it in the afternoon and to see our local shopkeepers, residents, enjoying the amenity with their friends and family is excellent. It's very rewarding for myself and for Elizabeth and I'm sure for all the consultants, including Jonathan, that were involved in this project. So we wanted it to be an amenity that was refined enough and elegant enough for a group of people to come in for a special celebration, but also casual enough and comfortable for your local tradesperson or someone that's working to come in and, and have a casual bite to eat or a drink. An important part to us is also that we acknowledge our own team that worked on this project. These projects like this take a long time and an immense amount of thought and effort. And we're very proud of the results, but we're also very proud of our colleagues that achieved such a success. I'm most proud of the fact that we've created this space, which we hope will be a multi-generational venue with a design and a quality to it that will last for many generations. 